Piper IgM syndrome is an immunodeficiency characterized by the inability of B cells to undergo class switching. It is caused by a deficiency in CD40L, a receptor necessary for the class switching process. In this video, I'll give you my visual mnemonic to remember all the important facts about Hyper IgM syndrome. To celebrate the end of the school year, this classroom is having a party. Do you see those M's dispensers all over the classroom? The teacher wanted to reward his students' efforts this year with delicious M's candy. Notice how these M's dispensers have their arms out so they are shaped like the letter Y. And you know what else is shaped like the letter Y? Antibodies, of course. Therefore, the antibody-shaped M's dispenser should remind you of the antibody IgM. Get it? Antibody-shaped M's for IgM. And since this is a classroom party, we have a ton of these dispensers around. This excess of antibody-shaped M's should remind you of hyper-IgM syndrome. Hyper-IgM syndrome is exactly what its name sounds like. It's a syndrome characterized by excessively high levels of IgM, but near non-existent levels of other antibodies like IgG, IgA, and IgE. Let's join the party to learn more. Do you see that student at the doorway? Looks like he's from a different classroom. He's even got a different uniform on. He's trying to switch classrooms to get in on the party. But it looks like our teacher caught him. Yep, just look at our teacher chasing him out. This boy being stopped from switching classrooms is our symbol for defective class switching. Get it? Since this guy can't switch classrooms, just like how B cells can't switch classes in hyper IgM syndrome. To review, class switching is the process by which B cells change the type or class of antibodies they produce. By default, B cells produce IgM, so they need to undergo class switching in order to make other classes like IgA, IgG, and IgE. This class switching is an important part of a normal immune system, since every antibody type plays a unique role in protecting us from infection. Defective class switching in hyper IgM syndrome prevents B cells from switching from the default IgM to make other antibody classes. As you might imagine, this leads to overproduction of IgM. Just picture this boy blocked from switching classrooms, and you'll know that hyper IgM syndrome is caused by defective class switching in B cells. But why exactly is class switching defective in hyper IgM syndrome? Oh no, looks like one of the students got a bit too hyper from the M's candy and dropped a top 40 CD. Now the party has no music. Coincidentally, this top 40 CD is our symbol for CD40 ligand, or CD40L, get it? Top 40 CD should remind you of CD40, and this is a CD that goes into the CD player slot, kind of like how CD40L is the ligand that slots into the CD40 receptor. Lastly, the kid has dropped the CD, which should help you remember that CD40L is defective in hyper IgM syndrome. We go into detail about CD40 ligand in our video on B cell activation. But in brief, the interaction between CD40L and CD40 receptor is required for B cell class switching. You can imagine how a defective CD40L in hyper IgM syndrome prevents B cell class switching. As a result, B cells get stuck producing the default IgM antibodies, leading to hyper IgM syndrome. Just picture our student dropping the top 40 CD, and you'll be sure to remember that hyper IgM syndrome is caused by defective CD40L. Take a look at our teacher brandishing his cane. He's clearly upset with that boy who was trying to switch classrooms. Since a lot of teachers are old and use a cane to get around, right? Coincidentally, this cane is here to remind you of the immunodeficiency in hyper IgM syndrome. Get it? Since canes are used when people are too weak to walk, and immunodeficiency just refers to a weakened immune system. It should be obvious why hyper IgM syndrome leads to immunodeficiency. These patients have excessively high levels of IgM, but have non existent levels of IgG, IgA, and IgE. Since these other antibody types are important for the humoral immune response, impaired humoral immunity leads to a broad range of infections. In particular, the inability to make IgA causes recurrent sinopulmonary infections, 
since IgA plays an important role in mucosal immunity. Next, let's pan over to the boy taking care of the plants here. Looks like this is a science classroom where they're growing plants. Notice specifically how these plants look like lymph nodes. As you may have guessed, these lymph node-like plants are our symbol for lymphoid hyperplasia. The lymph node-like plants should remind you of lymphoid tissues, and the fact that these plants are growing bigger should remind you of hyperplasia. Lymphoid hyperplasia is one of the characteristic findings in hyper-IgM syndrome, and it describes an increase in the size of all lymphoid tissues, including the lymph nodes, spleen, and tonsils. Why lymphoid hyperplasia happens is actually super complicated, but I like to think about it as a broken feedback loop. As we discussed previously, all antibody types besides IgM are deficient in hyper-IgM syndrome. Your immune system recognizes this and stimulates B-cell proliferation to produce more of these antibodies. However, our body doesn't realize that the problem isn't with B-cell growth, but rather with class switching. Thus, signals to stimulate B-cell proliferation never actually result in increased IgG, IgA, or IgE. So the body continues to stimulate B-cell proliferation in a futile attempt to get more antibodies. The lymphoid hyperplasia is just a physical manifestation of all those B cells crowding the lymphoid tissue. In a patient, this can manifest as palpable lymph nodes and enlarged tonsils. Just remember these growing lymph node-like plants and you won't forget the lymphoid hyperplasia seen in hyper-IgM syndrome. Next, take a look at that folding chair that our student is standing on to reach the plants. Yep, this is one of those folding chairs that resemble the letter X. This X shape should remind you that hyper-IgM syndrome has an X-linked recessive inheritance pattern. This X-linked recessive inheritance matters because it means that most affected patients will be males. Our male student, on top of that X-shaped chair, should reinforce that X-linked recessive diseases appear primarily in males. Just remember this chair with X-shaped legs, and you won't forget that hyper-IgM has X-linked inheritance. All right, that's enough M's candy and classroom drama for one day. Let's recap. Hyper-IgM syndrome is an X-linked recessive immunodeficiency characterized by an excess of IgM, but almost non-existent levels of IgG, IgA, and IgE. This occurs due to defective class switching in B cells, which means that B cells are only able to produce IgM antibodies. The mechanistic cause is a defective CD40 ligand on helper T cells, which normally binds to CD40 receptors on B cells to promote proper B cell activation and class switching. Clinically, these patients present with recurrent infections secondary to immunodeficiency along with significant lymphoid hyperplasia. Labs will reveal high levels of IgM and low levels of all other antibodies. And that's it for hyper-IgM syndrome. I think I'm getting sick from eating all these M's candies. I'll see you in the next one.